everyone, it's Danielle from Exploring Alternatives. As you know, we usually share stories about people living in really small spaces, like tiny houses and vans and sailboats. In this video though, we're going to show you this massive house. It's 4,000 square feet, and you might be wondering, how is this alternative? Well, it was designed and built using sustainable materials and cutting edge technologies that could be applied to a house of any size, and that's why we think it's really cool. It's also fossil fuel free, so there are no fossil fuels being used to power or heat this house, and it's also a passive house. And Natasha and Casey, who built and live in this home, will be explaining more about what passive house means. So let's go inside and meet them and talk about their house and their conscious living project. We wanted to build something that we were proud of and that we felt good about, that we felt was doing our part in living the way we like to live, which is a preventative lifestyle. Started doing research on Passive House and that's when I decided that was the direction we wanted to go in terms of performance and then everything else just kind of fell into place in terms of materials and just being in line with what we believe. The best way to get to Passive House standards is through a super insulated a envelope a extremely airtight home and orientation so then you orient your house so that you can maximize the sun exposure it's a building standard that's focused on energy consumption this whole back of the house is facing directly south so this house is designed to, for passive house standards and the idea is that we get the solar heat gain from the sun so we have overhangs outside that block the sun in the summer when the sun is nice and high and in the winter when it starts to drop, then it drops below the overhang and we get all the heat from the south. And this glass on the south side has a higher solar heat gain coefficient than the rest of the glass. And so what it does is it allows the heat to come in, lower our value, but gives us that heat when the sun is out. So this is our bioethanol fireplace. This is how we fill it. <laughs> Basically we went with bioethanol because it doesn't need to be vented. Bioethanol now actually burns extremely uh, clean and odorless. So it does start off invisible and it takes about 10 minutes and then the flame will really show up. The code built house, which is basically the worst house that you're allowed to build by law, <laughs> uh, is really the most expensive house to own long run. Because once you factor in all of your utility costs and, and maintenance and things that you're going to have to repair down the road, uh, it's, it ends up being the most expensive home because utility costs are not going down. In uh, 20 years from now, what's that house going to be costing somebody to, it's going to be a mortgage payment to heat and cool that house. So it's cheaper to do it sooner than it is to do it later. This is a model of uh, our whole wall assembly and we chose to go with rock saw insulation. So this is about 20 inches, whereas typical walls nowadays will be about six to eight inches, depending on what you're putting on it. And we chose to go with Roxol also instead of fiberglass. Roxol is more expensive, but it's also, it's, it's better for the environment. It was actually manufactured close to where we are, and it also has less pollutants in it. So this here is called a drain water heat recovery. And well, what this does is that it takes the water from your shower. In this case, we have it installed below our ensuite shower. And as the hot water goes down the drain, which is just lost energy basically, the water goes down the drain and then you have a cold water line that runs through this pipe. You can see top and bottom, there's an inlet and an outlet. And the hot, cold water goes around the pipe as the hot water is going down. So the cold water gets preheated. And you can set it up one of two ways. You can either set it up so that you preheat the cold water going to your shower so you use less hot water, or you preheat the cold water going to your hot water tank so you don't have to heat up as much water after. Either way, it does the same thing. And it, it's a way to just not lose all that hot water going down your drain. If you have about four or five kids, this is probably gonna save you a lot of money. <laughs> well, the Conscious Builder only recently came in, so it's part of this whole conscious group of companies that we're building. So the Conscious Builder, we have this, the podcast that Natasha and I do, the Conscious Living Podcast. Uh, we're starting an online store called The Conscious Store, which is gonna sell environmentally friendly and health conscious products. People understand what conscious means. It means awake, you know, being aware. So being aware of the decision. So when you decide to put, to build a certain way or to use a certain product, you're aware of all the implications that that product has. So it can be anything from where the product comes from, to how the product's manufactured, to how the workers are treated. 
So this is the cutout of our window. It's actually aluminum clad on the outside and fiberglass on the inside with insulated frames. It's triple glazed, obviously, and our part of our windows, depending on where you go in our house, we have some windows that are triple glazed with Krypton gas and some that are triple glazed with argon gas. So a big part of a passive house is that it obviously needs to be extremely airtight. So if anybody ever says, oh, you need your walls to breathe. Yes, you need your walls to breathe in the sense that you want vapor to be able to travel through it, but you don't want air to be able to travel through it. So you want your house to be as tight as possible and you want to mechanically control the air coming and going through your house. So this is what we put into RU. We have two air pahoda units as these run 24 seven. So it's constantly bringing fresh air into our house and constantly getting rid of stale air from our house. And as it's doing that, it's filtering the air. So we have fresh air and we're only losing 8% of the energy. So that means these are 92% efficient. So this huge thing <laughs> is our hot water tank. It's actually an 80 gallon hot water tank. But once again, because we're fossil fuel free, we had to figure out the most efficient way to heat our water. And we found this air source heat pump cool thing about this is that it's an air source heat pump so it takes the hot air from the room and heats the water so it's more efficient but in the summer it actually helps cool the house as well in the winter what we'll do is we'll turn off the, the heat pump part of it and we'll just run full electric so it'll just be an element just like every other electric tank so yes we use more electricity in the winter but it's offset by the savings in the summer so this here is the inverter for our solar panel system. We have 10 kilowatt system and we're part of the MicroFit program here in Ontario. So the cool thing about that is that we just sell electricity back to the grid. We're not off the grid and we're not using any electricity directly from our solar panels, but we actually basically turned our, our roof into a rental unit. So where this all started for me was, where it hit me is when we had Sullivan. That's when it hit me that it's, it's not just about you. It's about leaving this earth better than it was. I started thinking about what we can do, the way we live, what can we do to change, what can we change within the business. And then he started thinking about all everything that I see on the job sites and all the stuff that we throw out and all the stuff we put into the houses and you know just from off-gassing, from the VOCs, from different products and you know, the laminate products, countertops. We put all the money at this point into the envelope of our home because it's a lot harder to change that than it is to change, change the aesthetics if we wanted to do it later. It's a concrete countertop with an epoxy finish so it's done about an hour away. It's better than stone being cut out of the side of a mountain and shipped overseas and cut again and polished and all of that. So it was uh, obviously concrete's not the best for the environment either, but it was the better option for us at this point. The floors are all, for the most part, other than the few spots where you'll find tile, is all reclaimed wood. And the nice thing about the reclaimed wood, first of all, we're not cutting down any trees to put this. It's all trees that are already down anyways. We have a podcast called The Conscious Living Podcast. And with Casey, with plus, Casey Natasha. plus Natasha. The website is caseyplusnatasha.com. It gives us the opportunity to reach out to people who inspire us and learn from them and figure out how they got from where they were to where they are now. Really, what we want to do is just provide a platform to empower people and educate people and inspire people um, in all facets of life. Yeah. One of the things that Casey and I always say is um, lead by example. <laughs> and we try to preach it. Um, to ourselves. We are still training ourselves literally to to shop differently for example so um, we don't necessarily buy brand new we're not into this whole what is it called fast fashion where literally products yeah. are just you know turned over within like weeks yeah. so we buy a lot of secondhand and consignment and and um, the food that we eat we try to eat you know locally and organic so we're not you know inducing our bodies with chemicals so we try to really apply this um, lead by example to all facets of our life and we're not perfect either right and, and, yeah. and it's and like I said Still it's a, a daily yeah. practice we all we can do is the best we can do so that's it I hope you enjoyed learning more about these green building technologies and sustainable materials give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to see more like it